Hi, I'm Tim Von Rieden here at cgcookie.com, and welcome to this tip tutorial on layer masks, understanding them, and how to use them in your own work. Okay, let's get started. So what is the function of a layer mask? And the best way I can describe it is it allows you to color in only a specific part of your piece that you want to be colored. I was first shown layer masks back when I was in school by my friend Dan, and I was first using them on my characters to add and build like a depth of shadow around the edges of my characters. Since then, I've used layer masks in pretty much every piece that I've done, whether it be just for adding a quick splash of texture to a specific area, or if I wanted to add color to a specific section of the piece. I could do that all with layer mask. So to better illustrate how a layer mask works, let's look at the canvas that I have set up here. So right now we only have a background layer created, and let's say I wanted to create a sphere. So I'm gonna do that on a new layer, and let me grab midtone gray, and lay out my sphere. And let's say I wanted to build up some really nice values on the sphere without it ever showing on the background layer. This is where a layer mask would come in handy. So I'm going to rename this layer sphere and I'm going to go down here create another new layer and this will be my layer mask layer. So it's on this new layer that we're going to build up our values but first I want to make sure that we won't go outside of the edge of that sphere and that's where we have to create a layer mask. So now, with the layer mask layer selected, and as you can see it has these little corners indicating what layer is selected, I'm going to hold command on my Mac, and I'm going to choose the content inside of the sphere. And as soon as I clicked, you can see how I got this marching ant selection around my sphere, and that lets me know that I have the content selected. So now from here, I'm going to go down, and I'm going to choose my mask icon, which is on the very bottom of your layer tab. And the icon looks like a rectangle with a circle that's inside of it. So as soon as I click that, not only did my selection go away, but I created this layer mask which is linked to the original layer. Now something important that I want to point out is that whenever you create a layer mask, it automatically selects that layer mask rather than the original layer that you were working on. So if you want to add color or something, whatever it may be, to that layer, you want to make sure you have the left layer selected, not the layer mask. So what exactly does this new black and white thumbnail represent? A layer mask works in either black or white. Whatever is black won't be seen and whatever is white will be seen. So let's say I add white to this layer mask. You can see how you won't really see it appear on your actual canvas, but in the thumbnail itself you can see how much you have edited it. So rather than looking like a circle now, it looks like a scribbled mess. So I'm going to undo that with Command Z. And now if I wanted to add that value to my sphere, I'm going to make sure I have the left layer selected. I'm going to go ahead and choose the soft edge brush. And since I have white, that'll be my highlight. I'm going to grab a darker color for my shadow. As you can see, even though I'm drawing outside of the sphere's edge, it is only appearing in that circle that we masked out. And this is why masking can be so great, is because then you can do things like this without having to worry about it spilling over onto the background layer. Okay, before I get too carried away with shading the sphere, you can see how in the original layer it looks a bit more messy, and it's that layer mask that is cleaning it up and giving it that nice sharp edge to it. And if I deleted our layer mask, so if I right click and say delete layer mask, you can see what it really looks like without the mask there. So if I Command Z that, you can see the nice, clean, refreshing sphere that we get just through a layer mask. And the second way that I see people using layer mask in their work is something that I don't use that often, but it's something that I want to show you guys in case it's something that interests you. So I'm going to make a new layer. And let's say I fill the entire canvas red. And just like before, I'm going to hold Command. I'm going to select the content in the sphere layer, so you can see how it selected the sphere. I'm going to choose my mask icon again. So now my sphere is this red dot, and it kind of looks like the Japanese flag. So let's say I wanted to go in and edit the layer mask rather than the original normal layer. So if I chose, let's choose a normal brush here, or I'll choose the texture brush. And let's say I chose white, and I went in and I started drawing. And you can see how it's editing my layer mask 
and which is directly corresponding to the red that is in the original layer. So the more white I'm adding, the more of the original layer I'll see, which is that solid red. And then if I chose black, it'll start erasing that red. But in essence, you're not erasing anything. All you're doing is you're editing the layer mask. So that red is always going to be the same. So if I delete that layer mask, it's still that solid red canvas. But it's only when I do and edit the layer mask that I get this kind of cool effect. So that's another thing you can do with layer mask. And it's something that I fully recommend doing in your own work. It saves me a lot of time and energy, especially doing something like a sphere, rather than having to erase everything that you know falls outside of the sphere border. You can just use a mask and it instantly cleans up your edge. Thanks for watching this tip tutorial on layer mask. And if you have any comments or questions, leave them in the section below and I'll make sure I'll get back to you.